Hello there viewers and welcome back to another video today here on Gran Turismo Sports. So today you join us for round 12 of the Medway Racing League Group 3 series and we are here at Spa Franklin Shore. So uh, yeah, I think Sim Racing's favourite circuit to be honest, I think everybody can agree to like Spa. So yeah, brilliant circuit then here today for the penultimate round of the Medway Racing League. So coming into the bus stop chicane here, we're on our outlap now at the start of qualifying and uh, well, we're trying to get a tow here so we are queuing up basically at the bus stop chicane just trying to get ourselves spread out enough so that we don't crash into each other but close enough so that we're in slipstream range so coming out of the bus stop chicane then on the start of our first lap of qualifying braking for the source about 80 meters before the corner so it's a little bit after the 100 meter board slamming on the brakes in and turning into the source try not to make, take too much curb through the source because it can unsettle to you do not touch the sausage curb on exit tricky to get the power down out of the source you've got yeah got to be careful especially in this super which is not great on traction Coming down now into Eau Rouge, uh, Eau Rouge and Rodion is flat out, certainly on super softs, on harder tyres maybe not, but it's easy flat out in this Supra on the super soft tyres. Come down the Kemmel straight now, we are in the slipstream of Dimitar in front and we're actually gaining on him significantly, it's, I think he's fallen out of Kelvin's slipstream in front frustratingly, so we're going to blast past Dimitar here, which is a bit frustrating, we don't really want to be overtaking on a qualifying lap, but needs must. Coming now in it to the Lecom and into Mal Malmody, tricky section this with the kerbs. Um, yeah, they're not too friendly, the curves through there, and uh, easy to get the whole section wrong if you get the first bit wrong. Braking now for Ruxels, uh, braking just at the start of the curve on the left hand side as you trial brake all the way through this corner. Then coming into X curve, just giving a little dab of the brake before you turn in, very easy to hit the bollards on the inside of that corner there. Uh, yeah really deceiving corner that I can never get it right for some reason coming now down into Pearl giving a little slam of the brakes at the Marshalls uh, light on the right hand side so the big uh, like yellow light thing uh, now coming down into the Fang Yo chicane Braking just as the curb starts on the left, just after it begins, basically braking at the 15 meter boards. And we've actually made a bit of a hash of that there, went in a bit too deep, a bit late on the brakes. I think we forgot that we are in now uh, Kelvin Slipstream. Braking now for Stavolo 1, a uh, really difficult corner, got to take a late apex. I never carry enough speed through there for some reason. Stavolo 2 is even trickier. Um, just about managed to take it flat out there that's very very difficult to take it flat out especially with the bollard that's on the apex of the corner if you hit that bollard you're just screwed you lose so much speed so it's a really scary corner that coming now into Blanchemont it's just about flat out on super soft tyres by using all of the track but that is very scary certainly once the tyres start to wear out and then slamming on the brakes then for the bus which you came just a little marking on the uh, ground using some uh, like tyre marks on the ground then coming through the bus stop uh, you want to muller the first uh, part of it Mull of the curve through the first bit and then coming up to the start finish line that's laps going to be a 2 minute 15.6 so 2.15.6 at the moment that's put us on pole by a glorious 8 tenths of a second but remember this is only the first lap of qualifying so it won't stay that way I would argue actually that our second lap of qualifying was a better lap but unfortunately we did not have slipstream on this lap so on that previous lap we had Dimitar slipstream through sector 1 and then we had Kelvin slipstream through sector 2 and especially through sector 3 but on this lap we didn't really have any uh, Kelvin quick back to the pits uh, when we were going down the Kemmel straight. So coming across the line then, only managed to do a 2.15.7, so didn't quite manage to improve, even though it probably was a cleaner and better lap. We did then do one more lap, but we made a bit of a hash of that lap and ended up aborting that. So that was the end of qualifying. As you can see on screen, Ryan did manage to go faster and he managed to go 0 0.011 seconds within our lap time and he actually managed to do that without slipstream as well which is highly impressive did it right at the end of qualifying after I'd already finished so uh, yeah Ryan did a superb job then to get second place with no slipstream only what a hundredth of a second off of us with Dimitar qualifying in third you got Mike who very impressively qualified in fourth in the Volkswagen uh, VGT GTI thing which doesn't have all that much power nowadays after the recent BRP update so he did a really good job then of qualifying in fourth now we've got the fake race so the good old fun race that we have before each round now sorry to disappoint you but this is the last time that we'll be having a, a fake race uh, after this round the fake race got discontinued very sadly because the organiser Matt he's miserable and uh, you know it's just a Debbie Downer so uh, yeah that, unfortunately this is the final fun race but we're going to enjoy it whilst we've got it so in the Toyota Supra then now the Supra as we all know uh, doesn't do standing starts uh, it just doesn't just doesn't move when you put your foot down like I mean just watch this so as the five lights go out we put our foot on the throttle and um, well look at Ryan on the left um, yeah bye Ryan <laughs> <laughs> just we started on power and now we're out of slipstream range of Ryan almost so uh, yep yeah, super doesn't move off the line then 
going into the source, no one punted us, which was a surprise to be honest. There was carnage behind us, but nobody punted us. Um, don't know why to be honest, considering this is just a one lap fun race. Uh, that was prime opportunity to send me off into Narnia, but no one did. So coming through uh, Iruge and Radion now. Uh, as you can see, we're already out of the slipstream range of Ryan, although we Ryan did make a hash of Radion then, so we are back within his, the slipstream range, but we do need to take note of that for the race itself. Coming up to Lacombe then, uh, obviously we're not going to break for Lacombe, of course not. I mean, of course we're going to try punting uh, Ryan off, but, uh, well, Dimitar didn't break for Lacombe either, <laughs> so he punted off us, and we did an epic 360 there. So, uh, yeah, 360 that. Now everyone's coming through us as we are ghosted, so we're now in a huge pack of five cars, with the yeah, car cars quite little literally driving through us, now coming down into Brookcells, uh, rest of the lap we decided not to muck about and to actually take this seriously and to you know actually use this as practice and as a like you know racecraft practice and start sort of working out where you can and can't overtake so in P3 now in this fun race we're looking to get past Adam into Pawn, are we going to be able to overtake him? No we're not, we backed out of that move then, uh, yeah weren't Far enough alongside, we went half a car length alongside. We've now got Jake Beatty right behind us, giving us a bit of a bump draft. So is that uh, are we are like that bump draft? Is it going to allow us to go past Adam as we send it around the outside into the Fania curves? Uh, not quite. We're side by side. Are we going to be able to pull off the move? Probably not now because we're on the outside for Stavlo one. And actually, Jake's going to punt us off into the gravel trap. So uh, yeah, faith. <laughs> Jake decided to have a bit of fun and send us off into the gravel exiting Stablo 01. So we're now down to P12. And so it was at this spot that I thought, ah, stuff practicing the race craft and all that kind of thing. Let's just go back to having fun. Uh, it is at the end of the final ever fun race in MRL. So coming through uh, whatever this part's called, an interbunch, I don't know what that first bit's called. I think it's got quite a funny name. Coming through Bunchmont then, we're going to turn hard right and we're going to go absolutely flying across the grass here into the boss of chicane. But unfortunately, Gran Turismo is, well, it's a Debbie Dan, it's boring. It's like Matt, it's just a really boring game which just will not let you have fun as uh, Dimitar in front break chicks me. It will not let you cut the boss of chicane. So we're going to have a second attempt here and again, the game resets us. So um, thank you, Gran Turismo. Even though we've turned off replace car to track, you're still resetting me to circuit and won't let me go flying over the top of anybody and do some massive, you know, uh, Italian job style jump over the top of everybody through the bus top chicane. So, very disappointed there in that fun race. We had our fun spoiled. But, um, moving ahead then to the actual race. Like I say, you got myself starting on pole with Ryan in second, Dim in third, and Mike in fourth. You then got Jake Beatty starting in fifth. You got Sean in sixth. You got John Down in seventh, actually. He didn't do a great job in qualifying then with the ancient pleb, the fastest driver in India, starting in P8. So, grid start then, like I was saying. Um, Matt decided to do this just to cause carnage into the source basically. Uh, so as the five lights come on then, as we uh, don't put traction control on, we try and do the start manually. We, uh, well, we release the handbrake and again the super doesn't move. We actually get a terrible start off the line there as the car massively bogs down. Coming down into the source now, check out the radar as we've got a number of cars dive bombing us. We're now being sandwiched on the exit of the corner and we've ended up taking out Mike Bingan. Um Yeah, completely not our fault. We just got sandwiched then. Um, yeah, we had a number of drivers outbreak themselves into the source and I ended up getting squashed into Mike and spinning him out. Nothing I could do. So we've gone from pole position on the grid now to being four seconds off the lead, already taking a driver out and we're now down in P8. So this has been a disaster of a start. At this point in time I was fuming. I was just so, so annoyed. But not only was the poor getaway of the super but then people not breaking in time for the source. So now slamming on the brakes for Lacombe and not quite sure why I went in hot then um, I think I braked on time but uh, yeah I think there was a mixture of slipstream and cold tyres that caused me to kind of go in a bit deep there and I think uh, Kelvin was also being very cautious going now into Brookcells we're going to try and get past Kelvin again bit of uh, contact there by accident apologies for that Kelvin I uh, was a little bit aggressive there but I was also rather annoyed at this point in time uh, that my pole position had just turned into 8th place coming out of X curve then or X corner I don't know what that corner's called to be honest uh, back behind Kelvin didn't manage to get past him so we are now back down to P8 and that gap's gone up by another second now to Ryan so yeah Ryan's now five seconds in front of us after we'd out quantified him so yeah really really annoying the start of this race here are we going to be able to overtake Kelvin anytime soon because well the more time we spend back here in the pack the more time we lose the less the chances of us winning I fancy my chances this race I fancy the chances of me winning and um, so yeah really really annoying that we're all the way back here coming 
it out of Stablo 2 then. Are we going to be able to slipstream our way past Kelvin down into the bus stop chicane? He has not got slipstream himself, or as we do. And uh, so as we he goes to the left to go defensive, but we managed to outsmart him and actually sneak our way past him there before we got to Blanchimon. Yeah, just managed to sneak our way past in quite a like a deceptive move. We moved to the right first to think we make him think we weren't coming past. Then we darted to the left and snuck our way past him. So we're now up to P7 then as we enter the bus stop chicane for the first time this race. The good news for us is that P3 is not all that far ahead. P3 is just up ahead. He's probably only about a one and a half, two seconds in front of us. So he, we can quite easily get into third place here with a few sneaky overtakes. We can get back up to third pretty quick. So coming out of Los Source then for the second time this race, we are within the slipstream range of the plaque in front, which is crucial. Um, having that slipstream, especially here at Spa in Sector 1, it is so, so important. It will gain you so much time. So we are within the slipstream range of the Ancient Pleb as the Ancient Pleb cuts uh, the first part of Radion a little bit too much there and gets his car unsettled which I think meant he had to lift off on exit um, yeah he lost a lot of time there coming out of Radion as yeah like I say he made a bit of a hash of it so we are gaining on him now down into Lacombe slamming on the brakes then just after the curb starts on the left eight, the Ancient Pleb has gone wide so he's made a hash off these few corners here and we're gonna sneak our way up his inside into Malmody when he's least expecting it um, yeah very sneaky overtake there very opportunistic from us coming down now into Bruxelles we're also going to send it on Adam to Bron in what was actually a pretty good overtake in my opinion he was too busy looking at Sean didn't realize we were there as we sent it up Adam's inside not even a bit of contact I don't think either so we are now into P5 we've gone from well eighth to fifth in half a lap so I'm uh, very happy with that then coming through Puon uh, we are only what three tenths behind Sean in front so well four tenths now so we should be able to get past him sometime soon we are well close enough to go for a move certainly into the bus stop chicane we're now ooh, looking to go up his inside there as um, Sean and Mark were fighting there we could have maybe snuck up Sean's inside but no a little bit too far back to go for the move Sean he's looking all over the back of Mark here so we may be able to capitalize on these two battling and we may be able to make our way past so coming out of Stavolo 2 then we are literally right behind Sean, just giving him a tiny bit of a tap then through Stavolo 2, giving him another bump draft here. There's no point pulling out yet because we'll just hit a wall of air and slow down. Remember, Sean's in the slipstream himself, so yeah, I'm not going to be able to get past right now. Uh, will we be able to go for the move into the bus stop chicane, though, into the heavy braking zone? Sean is pulling over to the right, so no, we're not going to be able to go past him. And we've actually made a bit of a hash of the bus stop chicane there as we tap the back of Mark Demand. And actually, Adam Tabron, he's managed to make his way back past us so uh, yeah we got a bit put, put off there by Sean when he moved over to the right to defend we got a bit put off by it missed our breaking point slightly and did go into the back of Mark so are we going to be able to regain those positions now looking around the outside of Adam through the source that to be honest was never going to work I kind of went there by accident didn't attend, intend to go to his left we are back well we're still within slipstream which is good but we are back down to sick so that is a little bit frustrating coming through Radion then for the third time this race are we going to be able to re-overtake Adam Adam at any point soon we have got a speed advantage on him as I think Adam made a bit of a hash of Radion then but unfortunately uh, Adam is in the slipstream range he's in within slipstream unlike us so we're not going to be able to overtake him right now same on the brakes then for Lacombe we are on the outside of Adam as he goes into Mark Demand slightly there pushes Mark wide it's a, all kinds of scrapping going on here we're losing so much time as I'm going round the outside of Adam through Malmody and we managed to make the move stick and now going into Bruxelles can we go up marks inside not quite uh, that's the third time this race we've attempted that move we've attempted it every lap and uh, yeah not managed to pull it off that side round but yeah that overtake on Adam we managed to pull it off because Adam hit the bollards on the inside of Malmody we've now got the run on Mark going down into Puon are we going to be able to break late and overtake him yes we are so we're now up into P4 just like that just a second ago I was saying about us being down in sixth and now we're back up into P4 so that goes to show you just how easy or just how quickly you can make up positions in a race like this where everybody's together and where it's a grid start so we're up to fourth place then on lap three of the race gap to Ryan though is now 5.7 seconds so that is a really big gap 
to the lead. You've got Ryan and Dimitar. Them two have just checked out at the front. I mean, we can't even see them. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of time to make up now over the next 20 laps. Strategy for this race it is a fuel saving one stop. So, ideally, you want to be going to the end of lap 12. So, short shifting for the first 12 laps, and then you want to go flat out for the final 11 laps. Yeah, a tank of fuel does pretty much smack on 11 laps around here in the Supra. Coming up to the bus stop chicane, then, not quite close enough to Sean to go for the move, but we do want to get past him ASAP um, because, yeah, we are losing time here back in the pack. We want to get into third place and start hunting down Ryan and Dimitar as soon as we possibly can. As we uh, come up to the source, then we are reasonably close going into the source, and Sean he's actually outbreaks himself there and he's gone in very, very deep into the source. So, coming out of the corner, then we are now side by side with Sean as we make our way down to Radion and Odrugian Radion. Uh, do not want to go side by side through here unfortunately before we back out of it Sean backs out first so uh, yeah we have bigger balls than Sean as such as yeah but Sean pulls out of the move then I think he realized there was no point in fighting me um, I think he realized my pace after I put it on pole so he's yeah tucked in behind us now giving us a bump draft on the way up to look on we're just keeping over to the right to make sure that nobody re overtakes us we do not want to be going back into that pack so we're in third place here and um, well that was it really in terms of fighting with that pack that was the move that got us into p3 and we did manage to pull away moving ahead then a couple of laps we've managed to increase the gap to the pack behind to two and a half seconds so uh, yeah they continue to have an almighty punch up behind us as we manage to break away so fortunately we are no longer in that coming up to the start finish line then going to set a new fastest lap of the race of a 216.1 but uh, well i just had a little, little look at the fuel then down in the bottom right and it is not looking good so at this point in the race you want about 60% of attack left so we're five laps into the race still got seven laps left of this stint and we've only got 56% of a tank so that is not good we need to do some pretty heavy fuel saving now for the rest of this stint for comparison as we go on board with Dimitar here on board with his live stream he's still got 60% of a tank left at this point so he's got 4% more than us at this point in the race as he's behind Ryan and he's able to fuel save in his slipstream two laps later I've now only got 39 percent of a tank left when I ideally need about 42 percent and Dimitar for comparison he's got 45 percent of a tank left so he's got a whole lot more fuel than me um, yeah he's going to be able to go flat out for the rest of this turn whereas I am absolutely not going to be able to one up later I'm now down to 30 percent of a tank whereas Dimitar he's got 38 percent of a tank still left so he's got 8 percent in hand in us which is a huge amount of fuel when you're this late on in a stint another lap later I'm down to 22% whereas he's now on 30% so he's a whole lap ahead of us now in terms of fuel he's got a whole lap more than us uh, by the end of lap 10 I'm now down to 14% so I'm going to get only 7% of a tank now for these last two laps whereas Dimitar he's got 22% of a tank still left so he's miles ahead of us now in terms of fuel and now as we move ahead to the late on in lap 11 as we're approaching Blanchemont here it's dawned on me that just how low I am on fuel so coming through Blanchemont now we're going down into fuel mode 6 which is not something you ever want to be having to do really we really are running low on fuel here I really am concerned and looking back at it I should have pitted now to be honest at the end of this lap I should have pulled into the pit lane and um, then just kind of gone fuel saving for the second stint I should have yeah, done the first stint flat out and then fuel saved in the second stint pulling into the pits now then at the end of lap 12 we have got 0.0, .0 laps of fuel remaining the car is about to cut out as we pull into the pits then we are literally empty we have got nothing left Left in the tank so pulling into the pits now we lost two seconds over the course of those last few laps as we had to go into heavy fuel saving mode so threw a lot away a lot of time away there we were within three seconds of Ryan at one point but ended up five seconds behind as we pulled into the pits so you can see everyone's pulling into the pits then you got uh, Dimitar still got seven percent of the tank left it's crazy how much fuel he still adds and uh, yeah Ryan's got two percent left himself Ryan timed his fuel perfect he had his, his fuel was perfect all the way throughout that first stint it was spot on um, so yeah filling the tank then going to fill the tank up all the way up to 100% so that we can then go flat out on this final stint of the race and try and hunt down Ryan and Dimitar so yeah filling up the tank then what is D Dimitar and Ryan what are they going to have when they exit the pits so they both filled their tanks then to 100% as you can see on the leaderboard on the left so they've both filled the tank as have we so we're all now going to be going flat out to the end of the race as we come out of the pits now the gap to Ryan is 6.36 
seconds and the gap to Dimata is 5.7 so those two they are glued together you can see them going up over Radion now they're together out front and there's a big gap back to me so we're going to have a lot of time to make up here now over the course of the next six laps so ignoring the out lap the six laps after that I did we well, not mean to sound big headed here but I did uh, six of the best and most consistent laps I have ever done so the six laps after this were all two minutes 16.0s literally every single one of them was a 2.16.0 and the fastest lap of the race ended up being a 2.16.0 set by Ryan so six laps in a row I got well, well within a tenth of the fastest lap of the race but did not manage to get it which is so frustrating every time I went across the line I was like Ugh! That's so close, so close to getting that bonus points. Um, but yeah, I'm going to show you the six laps here now in a side-by-side -side comparison which I've made. So I hope you guys enjoy this. I'm going to go silent now for the next two and a quarter minutes. So enjoy. So yeah, six very, very similar laps then. Uh, yeah, pretty good consistency. I actually tell a lie, uh, one of the laps was a 2.16.1. So you can see lap 15 there was actually a 2.16.1. You may have noticed coming out of Malmody on one of those laps, I actually went off into the gravel trap. I went off into the gravel and onto the grass and yet didn't lose any time, which was rather odd. I was expecting to lose tons of time from it. But uh, yeah, by the end of the sector, I was still purple, which is rather odd. Uh, that's why I got the penalty that you can now see, but the penalty is not a problem. Uh, at Spa, when you go into the bus of chicane and into the source you serve some of your penalty even when you don't want to so that's not a problem as you can see we're now on lap 20 of the race with ryan having that fastest lap of the race fuel is not a problem uh yeah we'll be able to go to the end of the race still flat out and you can see we have reeled in the two guys in front so ryan he was what 6.3 seconds ahead when we exited the pits he's now only 3.5 seconds ahead and dimitar he's what only two seconds ahead having been 5.7 seconds so we have caught the two guys up a lot in front unfortunately though as we move ahead then to the final lap of the race that wasn't enough to be able to catch the guys up uh, our tyres started to drop off and uh, yeah we started doing mid 216s couldn't reel them in enough as we well we run out of laps basically so coming out of the fan chicane then on this last lap of the race coming into Stavolo um well have a look at that ahead Dimitar's off Dimitar has gone off the circuit and he's so nearly hit us as well when he rejoined the track. Dimitar has crashed on the final lap of the race 
coming out of Stavolo. So with only a few corners to go, he has binned it out of second. He's been in second place all race long, was never anything more than about a second and a half or so behind Ray. And on the very last lap, he has lost it coming out of Stavolo. And well, as we go on board with Dimitar here, then coming into Stavolo 1, he just takes a little bit of curve there through the first part and it just spits him off. To be fair, I think Dimitar, he should have lifted off sooner. I think he may have been just mentally tired or physically tired because he did keep his foot planted after he'd lost the back end. But yeah, just got ejected off to the left, off into the gravel trap. And that is a cruel way to lose out on second place after, by the way, a, a superb, superb drive by Dimitar in the Mazda, which is not a strong car around Spa. He did so, so well to... Well, hold second all race long and loses it right at the end. But as I come across the line then, to finish second myself, end up finishing three seconds behind Ryan, who, yeah, did a really good race, couldn't quite catch him up after that, well, horrific start. Um, if it wasn't for that start, and if it wasn't for us messing up fuel, we probably could have beaten Ryan, but, uh, yeah, wasn't to be in the end as we came home in P2 with Dimitar three seconds behind us in third place. The Ancient Pleb and John ended up finishing pretty much together, uh, batting for fourth and fifth at the end then. Uh, then you had Kelvin just behind in P6, and uh, Mike also not far behind in seventh. You you then had Sean and Adam also not far behind in 8th and 9th. So there was one massive cluster there from 4th down to 9th. The, yeah, the spread by, what, 7 seconds? So, yeah, big group of cars then. And then you've got Steve Coatesworth finishing his first race in 10th place. Zohir Ali, after his highs off the Red Bull ring, finishing down in 11th then here at Spa. Got Dimon Ivanov in 12th, Jake Beatty in 13th, and Mark Hughes coming home in 14th. So everybody actually finished that race, which is not that common, to be honest, in MRL, for a 54. 53 minute race for everybody to finish none of them uh, race quitted and all finished what within 50 seconds of each other really well done by everybody so yeah Ryan took the fastest lap of the race then with a 2 minute 16.0 so he frustratingly gets those three bonus points but um, we're already champion by now to be honest I don't actually know when I won the championship but I'd already won it by now I don't quite know when I, when I mathematically won it but yeah I am the champion so I hope you guys enjoyed watching that video Next up, uh, we've got the Nürburgring, the Nürburgring 24-hour circuit, which is my favourite circuit in the world. Uh, the video, that video is not going to be very long, to be honest, um, but yeah, it's going to have a special little bit in it. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you then. So goodbye.